Hello, and welcome to our next section about statistics analysis. To build a model on a data set, you first need to know what the data looks like, not only with your eyes or feeling, but also with your mathematical skills. In this section, we will learn not only to use what Spark has to offer on statistics, but also how we can extend it. Now we move on to the first video of this section that deals with basic indicators and correlations. We will also cover here sampling techniques. In this video we are going to take a look at the statistics object that will provide basic statistic indicators on your dataset and correlations. We will also show you how to sample your data with a technique called stratified sampling. Let's first load the tweets from the reference dataset we have built at the previous section. As this is the first video of this section, we run again the code to get a tweets data frame and register it as a tweets table for SQL queries. We won't show you always this code in the following videos and we assume that you are able to run it before starting the next videos. Now let's have a look at the statistics of the user profile. We select the friends count attribute and create a data frame. We need to convert the long to double to be able to request statistics information. There are multiple ways to get basic statistics and the first one is getting them directly from the RDD that backs the data frame. You have direct access to indicators like the count, mean, max, variance or standard deviation. When you ask for such statistic indicator on a RDD, Spark performs the operations on the entire data each time. This does not make much sense as the RDD is immutable by nature. To avoid such inefficiencies, you should use a stat counter class which executes once and caches or basic statistics indicator. You just request it via the stats method and have access to the cached information. If you prefer SQL, you can use some of the user-defined functions available by default. Finally, you could also use the mllib stat statistics object that also provides indicators. However, this takes as input an RDD of vectors. So you have first to convert your RDD of double. When you call call stats, you get a multivariate statistical summary object that will give you again the same indicators. And you will have the norm L1, norm L2 and number of non-zeros as additional indicators. Then we also have access to the approximative indicators that are faster. When processing big data, you are sometimes just interested in approximation, but not in a fully correct value. You have to call, for example, the mean approx on a RDD. Other interesting indicators are the sample ones with sample standard deviation and sample variance. Let's move on to the histograms and let's ask for five even buckets between the min and the max. You just have to call the histogram method on the RDD when the number of, with the number of buckets and you will get a tuple of arrays. The first array of double contains the generated buckets and the second array of long contains the count per bucket. You can also manually specify the buckets. In that case, you give the histogram method an array of double with the requested buckets and you get back the count per bucket. Now let's have a look at the correlations and see how much does the follower's count of a user depend on its friend's count. 
we can see from the returned values that there are a strong correlation. We could interpret this by saying that people who are followed a lot tend to follow back. As a data scientist, you will receive a lot of data. You may need to sample them because the data size does not fit into your cluster. You may also need to split the dataset for cross-validation when training a model. Once again, Spark has an easy solution for you. Let's first start with RZD sampling with the sample method. You just need to give the fraction and to specify if you want the sample with replacement or not. Spark also provides what is called a stratified sampling. For this, you will need the RDD of key value pairs. The keys will be your label and the value of a specific attribute. Let's assign, for example, label 1 for a user with friends count lower than 2000 and label 2 for a user with friends count higher or equal to 2000. You then have to specify the exact fraction desired from each label. Ok, so you just then have to call the sample by key method, which provides roughly the expected sample size on a random basis. The sample by key exact requires more resource than the simple random sampling, but will provide the exact sampling size with 99.90% confidence. Let's run this paragraph. You know I have two RDD samples at your need. In this video we have gone through what Spark offers us to analyze the dataset on a statistical point of view.